Welcome to Sorted Food. Our normals have been learning, battling and bickering for years now. No, Jamie! Why have you Just turned that on? I haven't. You've turned mine on to six! And quite rightly, you've pointed out where on earth are they on the scale of normal to chef. So this year, we've come up with the ultimate test to find out once and for all. We've come up with a load of challenges to test them on three core attributes that we believe make a top chef. That's technique, creativity, and organization. Under each attribute, there's a whole bunch of skill badges, and the boys will have to compete to win them. We love a competition, so we'll tally them up as we go, and at the end, one of our normals will be crowned the ultimate chef skills champion. Buckle up, everyone. I don't imagine it'll be a smooth ride. Now, we're going to start off pretty easy with some low-hanging fruit. Plenty of badges up for grabs today in the technique category. I feel nervous, like truly nervous, not just for today, but for the whole year. I was so much better at coursework than exams. It's because you can get your mum to do it. Challenge number one, you can lift the cloche. Basic knife skills. Oh, less optimistic. So when asked, James and I pretty much always give the same answer. What is your favourite or most important tool in the kitchen? It's a good chef's knife and a chopping board. They're skills you hone over years and years of practice. So what we want from you is to finely dice half an onion, finely slice the other half of the same onion, julienne the carrot and ribbon the cucumber. Off you go. Is there a time limit for this, Ebers? There's not a time limit, but time plays a role because if you take 20 minutes, you're probably not going to pass. Onion, bridge technique, chop off the ends. Bridge technique, keep the roots on the bottom. You can take off that top bit to help you peel. Obviously, Ebers, I always want to impress you, but I can't bear the thought of the guys being able to do it and me not. I'm happy with that. Julian Carrot. I'm gonna peel it first. Top and tail. So you've done the onion in four minutes. Half that way. It's got four halves. Four halves? You've just doubled your carrot quota. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go long first, so here we go. I don't know whether this is correct. Now I'm gonna go down here. Oh, I feel like I've effed this right up. I'm not gonna get bored. I'm not gonna get bored. Oh, I've got more. <laughs> I never do it at home. You're four and a half minutes in. What I'm very impressed with so far is no offcuts, no waste. It has all been cut up. I've got some offcuts here, but that makes for a fantastic stock. Ten and a half minutes, oh, Mike. Oh, man, no, that's not good. Ribbons, please. For use in a salad, for example. I feel like I'm missing something. But you said ribbons, and this is what I would do. So I've got a duff one again there. Shall I just do that? I'm going to halve it. There's some ribbons. 12 minutes. When are you going to give up, Mike? Oh, oh no. <laughs> stop the clock. There, stop. Stop the clock. Time's up. Thank you. You may leave the kitchen. I don't get to find out how I've done. That's it. Just you that. may leave the kitchen. <laughs> right, challenge one done. Now for the judging. I didn't enjoy that. I don't know about you two. It was stressful. <laughs> Up first, Mike. I don't remember putting these on my serving plate. I put them back on because I think here, for ribbons, you want long ribbons the length of the cucumber. You cut yours in half and you kind of just peeled it. Oh no. The julienne, the dice and the slice were all pretty good, but you did take the longest. And if you think of a midweek meal being maybe 20, 25 minutes, you took half your time just chopping some stuff. Jamie, let the boys see what you did. Again, like Mike, your dice and slice onion was very good, very little wastage. Your julienne did get a little bored. There's some real mixture in there between hoifer <laughs> thin and a bit more chunky. You by far got the most out of your cucumber, a mountain of ribbons, but half of those in the middle are so wet that they're not really great. Next up, let's look at Baz's. Leave my schlong on the plate as well. <laughs> Barry, also 12 minutes on timing. All pretty good. A little bit of peel on your plate. Oh, 
we talking about the prison? Most wastage. Barry. Most wasted. However, you referenced where you might use that. Oh, I'd put that in a smoothie. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> put it in a smoothie? <laughs> Barry, your ribbon's also the most precise, long and perfect for salad. You've left the core as expected. There are lots that you threw away that perhaps could have been put in. They weren't perfect. The question is, why weren't they perfect? So I think in this challenge, I will award the knife skills badge to Barry and Barry alone. I've realised what hurts the most right away and I'm going to do everything within my power to fight against that ever happening again. Technique skill badge number two up for grabs today. A sauce badge and we're looking at hollandaise. So over the last five or ten years, brunch has increased in popularity no end and still the most popular dish on brunch menus are egg-based dishes like eggs benedict, eggs florentine, eggs royale. Hollandaise is the common factor in all of those. Every chef is expected to know one. That's what we're testing you on. We're going to give you all the other components. All you have to make is the hollandaise. And you've got 10 minutes to do it. Off you go. I think I want egg yolks, melted butter. Oh, I don't know. Butter melting, I think, is important into a pan onto a hob so i think i want egg yolks over a bain marie when it comes to the technique that we're judging them on it is a combination of method end result we're looking for something that has the right consistency and the right flavor is this a vinegar reduction evers we have given you a vinegar reduction to save you time that's already done lovely save that maybe for make an egg white omelet later Whisk eggs up, over water, until it goes light and fluffy. And I need to flavour. Flavour. I would like some flavour in it, yes. I think it goes in now. Yeah, it does. So, lemon juice. Yeah, it does. You can, you can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what's this called? Vinegar reduction. I'm just going to put it in. Vinegar's in. I don't want these to get too hot because they're going to scramble. This is one of the core basic mother sauces. We've got it in how we cook. Once you've got that fundamental, there's so many things you can do with it. Evers! Evers! Of the normals, I reckon I've probably made this more times than they have because I do love holiday sauce. The catch is I very rarely make it successfully. <laughs> it nearly always splits. I imagine that this is emulsifying it and therefore making it nice and thick. Emulsify, good word. That's what the egg yolk is doing. So I'll go in with the clear butter and try and leave off the white scummy looking bit. You've had half your time. Oh. We're gonna give you a pretty much complete Eggs Benedict. All you're gonna have to do is nappe the sauce over the top. Nappe, is that, that means pour, doesn't it? Thank you, chef. Are there any tricks to stop the pan from moving around? Like, you do a chopping board and put a bit of tea towels on it, because it keeps twisting. Four minutes remaining. You have to take it off the heat, because now I've had heat. The whole point of doing this in the bowl over the pan is you don't want the eggs to scramble. He's spot on. Two and a half minutes left. Consistency-wise, I want to be able to draw a ribbon of eight in it. Oh, look at that, and it should last for a couple of seconds. This, what is this? This is chipotle Tabasco. I'm just going to flavour the sauce. Couple of drops, squeeze of lemon. In my own eye. 30 seconds remaining. Bottle sticks! Quite happy with the consistency. It is quite thick. Salt, uh, pepper. I'm going to get that over the top. I've got plenty because I'm in kitchen service, so obviously we're making multiple eggs, Benedict's Ben. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Service, please. Thank you very much. You may leave the kitchen. <gasps> a bit more love than that. They love a bit of praise, don't they? <laughs> Not quieter this time around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, within the time you all got hollandaise onto the plate, just 
Now let's look at them one at a time. Mike, show the boys what you did. Ooh. Oh, yes, mate. Oh, nice. Ended with a pretty good consistency of hollandaise. If I was to pick holes, didn't cook the egg yolks before you added in the butter. Neither did you season it. <laughs> it really feels like you've been told off, doesn't it? Okay, Jake, show the boys what you did. Oh, it's hollandaise. In the grand scheme of things, in your last few seconds, you tasted it and then chose to season it in your last few seconds rather than chive because you ran out of time. And given it's the hollandaise we're judging, it was well seasoned. Say nothing more and rotate. <laughs> <laughs> leave on the leave on a high. Three for three, Barry. Lift the cloth, show the boys. Mm. That is what I'd expect from you. Barry, strong on method. You cooked out your egg yolks best, got them really light and fluffy before adding in your butter, which you mentioned about clarifying and leaving the white behind. You seasoned it, the lemon, the reduction, and the salt and pepper were in there, and you plated it and you garnished it. Leave the kitchen quick! <laughs> quick, get out of here! If I was being super picky, I'd say, and you ask the question yourself, how do you stop the pan spinning around? At the point you're adding the butter, you should have the ribbons in your egg yolks. You can take it off the heat and you can do it on a tea towel on a board, just as Jamie did. Jamie was also keen to put tarragon into his vinegar reduction, which would have been wrong, because that's a <laughs> Bernays. <laughs> All three look and behave like hollandaise. But when we're talking about understanding the process and application of method plus seasoning, today, two badges, one for Barry, one for Jamie. Smile, Mike. I hate the look of this already. <laughs> There's a piping bag. Challenge number three. Let's imagine a scenario. If you're doing classic French cooking, you often need egg yolks, creme anglaise, mayonnaise, curds to glaze pastries or uh, bread. And in the hollandaise you've just made, you've got leftover egg whites. So to use those and put them somewhere valuable on the menu, how about a dessert? We would like three identical meringue nests. We're gonna give you the Chantilly cream and fruit to garnish. Off you go. Ah! Oh no! French meringue. Ah, uh, mmm, okay. Egg whites going into my bowl. Right, that wasn't me. But did you check it? Oh, come on. Lemon juice to clean your uh, bowls and bits and pieces here, because uh, any fat in here could stop it from aerating. So we've given you the weights and measures. You will require the egg whites and the sugars. And the key is for them to be white and crisp. Why is there bicarb in there? You bake these, don't you? Um, I'll panic whilst doing something. Is that baking powder? Is this the stuff? Oh, this is the stuff to stabilise the eggs. Oh, I think I put this in now. I think, the, uh, I know what this is. I want to say tartar sauce, but I think it's a stabiliser. I want soft peaks now so that I don't over whip it later on and that any less, it might start to deflate. There's enough air in that now for me to start adding sugar. A spoonful at a time, I think you have to add it gradually, otherwise it deflates the meringue. I'm going on the slice setting because I want all the sugar to be properly absorbed. What's that you've just added? Some bicarb or baking powder. So I think this is where I'm going to add my lemon um, for flavouring. This could be where it's all gone wrong. Will that hold? less confident. They are not stiff peaks. It's not going to work. Right, in that case, you have to do something different up with him. Piping bag. In that goes. Am I expected to ask you for a nice nozzle? Oh, yes I was. Okay, in that case, I'm going to put that there. I really hope the others don't notice. Do I need a nozzle? I don't think I need a nozzle. Why would I need a nozzle? Let's not use a nozzle. Provide one if you want it? No. See how lovely and smooth that is, Ebers. Very smooth. Stick this down. Little, little technique trick. We've got to salvage something back here. Good, so that's going to stick your paper down. Interesting. Oh, 
pouring it is, there's not, is there enough on one? Are you doing one? <laughs> is there, I've just realised. So you're doing one meringue pellet. You've had 12 minutes. I'm probably going to have to stop you at 20 if it takes you that long because some of us have got homes to go to. Oh no. I'm basically going round, creating a layer on the bottom and then building up round there. And I'm not really getting any definition from the nozzle because it's not whisked up enough. Or oh, is the nozzle stuck in the bag? Yeah, that would be why. I don't know what that is. You, sorry, you want three identical ones? Excellent. So what do these badges look like anyway? Because... <laughs> Gonna have to just put something on the plate here. Oh no! <laughs> Normal or chef, you decide. Let's see what we get. It's exciting, isn't it? Should I stop the clock? Sure. Cool. I'm just going to get that in the oven. Thank you very much. On your way. We'll bake these off. Uh, they'll need 100 degrees Celsius until they are crisp. And then we'll come back. We've baked them. We've let them cool. And we now have them in front of you with Chantilly cream and a little berry compote. For context, that kind of thing. So a pipe with a star nozzle, plenty of height, and leaving yourself a well in the middle to fill with that cream and the berries. Mike? Oh, was it baking powder? Reveal. Do you know what? They actually look pretty good. I'd be quite happy with them. I'd be right. <laughs> I'd actually be really That hard. is amazing, because I was dreading showing you guys these, so that, oh, right, okay. There are three of them. You mentioned the tartar sauce that you wanted to put into yours. Was it actually called it's cream of tartar? Cream of tartar. Oh. Yeah. You also chose to squeeze your lemon in. Flavour. Not really. Oh dear. It's not as shambolic as I thought it was. I think what I would continue to do is turn this into an eaten mess. Yeah, I did think that. Smash it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Ebers, come on. Don't you lift, bro? I thought it was muscles you were hiding underneath that chef jacket. Let's find some positives. You made three, and they were all roughly identical. They held some structure, but not really enough to give you the height of a nest. Not bad, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're like massive macarons, <laughs> mate. Not quite stiff enough. And then, rather than adding the sugar gradually, you dumped both bowls, icing sugar and caster sugar, in together, lost a lot of volume and it was never really going to rise again. But I didn't put the lemon in there. And I love your perseverance, because it was never going to work, but you went with it, and we've cooked them off. It's tasty. I don't think the method or the technique was there. Not really a nest. In the slightest. Not even a bit. What you got, Baz? I'm excited for this, because I don't know. <laughs> What is that? Do you want to know the annoying thing, Baz? You had the best method and approach. You started by using the lemon to wipe out your bowl to make sure there were no excess grease in there. Nice little tip. You then whipped up your egg whites and then you very, very gradually, slowly but surely, added your caster sugar and then icing sugar. Unfortunately, you did that before your egg whites were really stiff enough. Mm. Start off slow so you can get a real structure of small bubbles into it and then build up the speed. I think you were all a bit shy about going full speed to get really stiff egg whites. Please, Ben, try something completely new. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Fluffy, raw, raw, marshmallow. Uncooked. Oh. It's not what you want from a Rangness, is it, Ben? You know what? I feel like I've invented something new. Creativity challenge another week. This was technique. I think it's a clean sweep, isn't it, Evans? And I think it is a clean sweep. Not a single one of you <laughs> oh. got your French meringue badge. However, shock. The point of this year is improvement. So we're not going to do this kind of video again with French meringue. However, it's up to you if you want the badge to incorporate French meringue into a dish that you create for a battle or similar to prove that you can do it later on in the year. I'll leave it with you. I might just focus on the knife skills badge <laughs> first. <laughs> And there we go. Those of you questioning whether they're still normal, is that still the case? And because this is just the start of our ultimate chef skills challenge, comment down below what else would you like to see? What other badges should they compete for? And how should we test them? Oh, so first outing, 
Bans, how many badges you get? Um, one, right, okay. Two. Cool, two. we're going to do this, Yeah, I think I got one. Yeah, nice. Out of three. That's for you. Yeah, well, Mike, what about you? Yeah, wow, we're so cool. We got our badges. <laughs> Booking a dental appointment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I didn't know either, that. Mike. <laughs> what the was that? <laughs> <laughs>